Hey everyone, Jill Chacha here from Well That's Interesting, and I am absolutely thrilled to tell you about Spotify for Podcasters. I use it, I love it, and it all started by downloading the free Spotify for Podcasters app, which has all the tools you need in one place to record and edit your masterpiece of a podcast. Spotify for Podcasters also distributes your show to all major platforms. So when you hit publish, your episodes will stream not only on Spotify, but I'm talking about the Apples, the Googles, Stitcher, Good Pods, the other ones. <laughs> you get the idea. And you can monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership required. You could also set up monthly subscriptions and record ads just like this one. So what are you waiting for? Download Spotify for Podcasters today and start changing the world. Oh, and please, stay interesting. Welcome to Pod Save America. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. This is my favorite murder. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, for realsies, welcome back to, well, that's interesting. This is an in-betweeny, in-betweeny 003. I'm Jill Chacha, and I'm with Fresh Off the Beach. Oh, yeah. Marissa Riley. Thank you. So off the beach, <laughs> I only got a burn on uh, the left back quadrant. <laughs> Don't know how that happened. <laughs> So everything on the left side of my body, mm -hmm. but in the back in is the back. Uh, very tan. <laughs> um, everything in the front is totally normal and pale. Yeah. I don't so, know what happened. So successful. First time at the beach. Uh, I'm very jealous. I We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. We gotta, there's a window before the second pandemic wave here. Oh, oh God. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, no. uh, delete. 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 Uh, All right. No. Let's talk about... I was going to say, let's talk about something nice, but today... <laughs> This actually isn't nice at all. Oh, God. Okay, so before we get into our topic, uh, recap business. We have an Instagram. Well, that's interesting pod. I do. I post shit daily on there, so if you need a fix of something weird or wonderful or amazing, check it out. Follow it's... us and uh, enjoy. Uh, you can also email us at well, that's interesting pod at gmail. Uh, Again, we want to hear from you. Any fact that you've learned, any experience you've had, share it. And we're going to read it over the air. Any Britney song you love. That's right. Send it in. We'll talk about it. Good. I might even sing it. I, I'm kidding. I won't. Oh, my God. I will not. I will not uh, yeah. ruin your lives like that. Uh, so. well, if you just want to say hi, just say hi. Uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about, well, I know there's a lot going on in the world. Yeah. A lot. Oh, yeah. Just, and I think this is also very important, and I want to know what your thoughts are uh, on molasses. Okay. Um, <laughs> the truth is I don't have very many thoughts at all. I think I think about molasses once every two years. Mm. Last time I thought about molasses uh, was when I watched The Lighthouse. I believe that is what oh. they mixed with gasoline before they drank it. Oh my god! Is that right? I is that I, what that I was? walked out so much of that film. Good. Was, yeah. Uh, I, I sadly didn't. I I just remember they put a big dollop of this oh, brand yeah. gooey stuff yes. to make the gasoline taste better before they drank it, and then fucked uh, the light in the lighthouse. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I think that's what happened. I'm still not sure what that movie was about. <laughs> <laughs> No one does, and there's no way to find out. Um, yeah, that's that makes sense that they use it as a sweetener because molasses uh, today, yeah, and and all old timey lighthouse keepers uh, use it as a sweetener. It's uh, uh, I should have looked it up more as to what it is, but it's re it's, a ref <laughs> it's refined sugar cane. You, you basically you take the juice from a sugar cane and you boil it and you concentrate it down. And it's into molasses. Uh, so today. We're going to talk about the Great Molasses Flood, also known as the Boston Molasses Disaster, which occurred on January 15th in 1919 uh, in the north end of Boston, Massachusetts. All right, let's begin. Now, being a new year, it's January, uh, that was one reason for the optimism in the air. Uh, 
this past, the past November in 1918, World War I had ended and troops were coming home. The Red Sox won the World Series that fall, and the working class that lived and labored in the area had plenty of jobs converting factories from wartime production to peacetime businesses. Uh, and Emerson, executive director uh, of the Bostonian Society, describes the area as very close-knit, oh. and the people, uh, they are from very humble origins, basically. Uh, indeed, uh, the North End has the distinction of being Boston's oldest residential community. Uh, well, I mean, basically they started counting when white people moved in. Uh, so <laughs> white Aww. people and then Jewish and then Italian immigrants, Irish immigrants. Uh, so anyway, it was inhabited by uh, European people, I guess, uh, in the North End since the 1630s. Okay. So it's a long time. Oops, excuse me. That was disgusting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not as disgusting as the lighthouse. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's actually really very tiny, only 0.36th of a square mile. So it's less than, a, less, less than half of a mile. Teeny. Very, very teeny. Lots of people, lots of workers, lots of businesses, uh, and even schools on a very small plot of land. Now, this bizarre disaster occurred on the very north shore of the North End, uh, where the Purity Distilling Company was located. The facility was located at 529 Commercial Street near Keeney Square, right along the docks. Now, Purity used the harbor to offload molasses from ships and then store it there for a, uh, until they transferred it by pipeline to an ethanol plant. Now, you see, why only eat molasses when you can make a weapon out of it? Ah, yes. hey, the American way. Absolutely. Uh, molasses can be fermented to produce ethanol. Okay. It is a key component in munitions, uh, a component that fed our military's killy things during World War I, but now, with the war over, there's a shit ton of unneeded brown stuff around. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and in fact, one particular water tank on the harbor, one about 50 feet tall, one about 90 feet in diameter. Oh, wow. This thing already contained 2.3 million gallons of molasses, weighing in at 13,000 tons. This thing was nearly filled to capacity. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Ah. Now, it should be noted tanks at this time were not welded shut <laughs> why oh, would they okay All right. yeah uh so steel sheets they were made of a various a patchwork of steel sheets basically okay uh steel sheets would be placed side by side and then a third steel sheet would overlay the gap and then bolt them together okay i can yeah. see um uh, yeah, i can see some problems <laughs> coming up in in the, the future right so Rusty bolts and gaps between steel sheets were common. Uh, so one would think, oh, you gotta, you gotta keep an eye on this tank. It's, uh, it's you know, uh, fuck it. No, let's just see what happens and learn the hard way. Amazing. Okay, now a few days before the burst, more molasses was delivered from Cuba okay. on the ship Mialaro. Ooh. Mm, sexy. Now, an additional 600,000 tasty gallons, mm. literally filling this tank to the brim. Oh, no. Now, molasses, it should be noted, uh, when it's traveling on its way to America, is warmed, thinning it out, make it e making it easier to transfer uh, and faster to transfer between land to boat to tank. Okay. And this is where our, our problems begin. Yes. Now, on January 15th, temperatures soared to 40, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, on the East Coast at this time, as you know, that's pretty goddamn warm. That's pretty warm. That is a warm January That is day. A one coat uh, and a scarf. Yes. As opposed to like a, a thick uh, sleeping bag. Yes. Or whatever the equivalent was, probably heavy wool. Yeah, you, you, yeah you're basically in the Northeast and, and in New York, who January is, it's like a murder-suicide kind of month. Like, you just can't handle it anymore because you're, yeah. you're just constantly wrapped up. With wind. So murder-suicide with an icy wind. <laughs> with an icy wind. So it's face. already freezing. It's already raining. It's already snowing. Yeah. And then there's a wind. Yeah. It's the worst. Uh -huh. But 40 degrees is like a warm, balmy. Yeah, it's like bust out your shorts. Fuck yeah. So, uh, okay. 
So for the 2.3 million gallons in that tank already, um, let's just say that that molasses was starting to let its hair down. Ooh. And it was starting, it was starting to thin out, mm. basically. It was starting to thaw. Okay, it was starting to slowly expand, pressing against some very questionable rusty bolts. Oh, no. Now, with the addition of literally hundreds of thousands of gallons, uh, this newly hot molasses kind of sped up something wonderfully called thermal expansion, and that's kind of, I think, self-explanatory. I think happening so. Here. Yeah, I can piece that one together. Yeah. So, let's set the scene for a moment. Uh, there's an unusual January winter thaw happening, and people are out and about really enjoying a sunny afternoon on January 15th. At approximately 12.30 in the afternoon, Elizabeth O'Brien was planting geraniums in a window box. Lovely. Lovely. Bridget Clordy hung laundry by her house. The four firemen of Engine 31 were playing cards and watching school kids walk home for lunch. Oh, I'm so stressed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, this all took place just a mere 500 feet from the molasses tank. No. <sighs> all right. And what happened was our disaster. But first, what's not a disaster? What? Are the products that don't ruin your, your day. Ah, uh, that was yeah. a terrible ad break. Uh, no, it no. was so good. <laughs> it's the opposite of a disaster. It, it's, it's a product it's that great. won't smother your children. There you go. There you go. Buy Enjoy it. Enjoy it. 20th Century Studios presents Vacation Friends 2. Now streaming only on Hulu. Look at us all together again. We just wanted to give you guys a real honeymoon. Shots! 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 That's right. Now streaming. Shots! He was just released from jail. Where can I get a drink around here? Back on vacation. This place is nice. It's drug lord nice. I'm sorry, drug lord nice? With more baggage. Ever since he showed up, he turned this relaxing vacation into total chaos. Who does that? Vacation Friends 2. Rated R. Now streaming only on Hulu. And we're back. We're, we're back. We're so back. We're back. We're back in it. Uh, the disaster of 1919. God, what, what? That product really took me out of the, out of the horror that's about to happen. It really solved all of my problems, needs. Mm -hmm. It did a service for me. It did a service. We added it to kerosene. It was great. It was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. People in the area reported they heard what sounded like a quick series of rapid explosions. Like uh, a toy gun going pop, 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 but way louder. Until that crescendoed into one massive explosion with enough force, steel panels of the tank drove into the girders of the adjacent Boston Elevated Railway, which was their public transit. They have like an elevated train running yeah. through the city. So oh, the steel panels actually shot like a bullet into the Atlantic Avenue station that was oh, just a few feet away. My God. Now, Molasses is 40% denser than water. Okay, all right. Uh, so when it's bottled up, it has way more potential energy just waiting to be released. So if you're wondering what a 50-foot bottle of molasses looks like when it's cut open, imagine a 25-foot wave moving at 35 miles per hour. Oh. Uh-huh. I have, like, a, an image of, like, the wave emoji, but it's brown molasses and much more deadly yeah imagine the the shit emoji meets the wave emoji oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> perfect but maybe you could fit that into the no i, I, I was like it's it's such a weird thing to laugh about because it's like I it's know. so strange but also funny i it, it just fits this podcast so well like yes it's like a good it's like a good pair of pants funny um, but deadly <laughs> like a good deadly. pair of pants <laughs> <laughs> uh where are we ah uh, yes horror um so yes so 25 foot wave moving at 35 miles per hour this was the estimated height and speed of the uh thick black tsunami uh that suddenly came out of nowhere on a normal day in the north end of boston no one expected this well well actually we'll get to that uh, oh oh <laughs> yeah so Stephen Pulio of the Boston Post wrote, uh, wrote about uh, the buildings that were swept from their foundations and block after block was flooded with two to three foot puddles of molasses. Oh my God. He reported, quote, molasses, waist deep, covered the street and swirled and bubbled about the wreckage. Here and there, the, sh 
um, here and there struggle to form, whether it was animal or human being was impossible to tell. Only an upheaval, a thrashing about in a sticky mess showed there was any life. Wow. Horses died like so many flies on sticky paper. The more they struggled, the deeper the mess they were ensnared. End quote. Uh, the Boston Globe reported, quote, people were picked up by a rush of air and hurled many feet. So the explosion itself hurled debris and even a truck into the harbor. Uh, crews tried desperately to save people during the day because, of course, as night would set, as the wood molasses, uh, becoming a hard shell around those trapped. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. So this wasn't just like a 30-minute freak of nature thing. Yeah, this was a this was an ongoing. This was a long time coming. We're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about the disaster and the cleanup. But why don't you take a look at those photos, and uh, just they'll I'll put them on the uh, our Instagram account so y'all can take a look. But why don't you just describe what uh, the North End turned into? All right, so yeah. it looks photo. almost like a flood. Okay, so I'm looking at. Um, I'm looking at, is this the subway? Yeah, it looks like the elevated train. The and right elevated that train. is uh, the street. The street. And you just see, since the photos are in black and white, um, it looks like a flood. Yeah. It looks like it's been flooded. Um, but it's so hard to imagine this in color because I know that that is not water. It's that is thick, syrupy, black yeah. molasses. Okay, next photo. Devastation. The... Uh, a seal, and not a seal, a roof is flat on the ground. Yeah. Uh, one gentleman is walking over just boards and piles of rubble. I don't even know what. Yeah, it's even hard to make. Are. Hard to make out. It looks like a lot of the buildings were just built with like wood. Wood. It looks like a lot of things were built with uh, shingles, and uh, there's like old timey like wheelbarrows and wheels all over the place. Just, just shrapnel everywhere. It's horrifying. I'm, yeah. I'm shocked. Oh, oh my God! And it looks like, uh, of course, like when you picture a tsunami, just piles of things Oops. just end up in like one corner over here. There's a pile of something over there, and it's just it's rubble. It's rubble. just rubble, yeah. and I, I can't even make out what half of this is. Uh, the the train, uh, the elevated train here, uh, in in this next photo is just completely warped. Yeah. It looks like like a like a monster almost like, took it and like crumpled it yeah. in their hands. Yep, just like yeah, or maybe even like leaned on it or leaned it's like on sagging it, sagging in the middle. It's this is devastating. Um, I, I'm finding another photo of an elevated train where people are walking, and again, it just it looks like a flood. It looks like some sort of hurricane happened yeah. to this, but imagining that this is all molasses is. So strange. So strange. <laughs> and the fact that, like, if you were, imagine you were, like, waiting or stepping on, uh, like, a water, but it was sticky. That's yeah. what I'm trying to work through in my mind. Um, there's also a, a picture of a, a, an old school um, ambulance. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it's, it's pretty cool looking. Uh, that's my only addition to this photo. <laughs> but it, this looks... Cool and devastating. Cool and devastating. <laughs> And I, I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that this is so, this was a horrible, yeah. destructive mess. Yeah, 100 years ago. Wow. Uh, so first on the scene were 116 cadets who were, just happened to be training that day. Uh, they were on a ship docked at a nearby pier. So they ran as fast as they could through this, as you said, sticky, sticky muck. Um, the Boston Police, the Red Cross, the Army, and the Navy um, all arrived shortly thereafter. Uh, there were so many injured, approximately 150 people, that the nurses and the surgeons set up a makeshift hospital in nearby buildings. Uh, it would have taken way too long to get them all evacuated, uh, not only because of the numbers, but because of the debris and the two to three foot massive puddles. It just would have taken the volume just to wade through all that crap yeah people more people would have probably died yeah it's not like you can swim to yeah. help them you have to wade yeah it's, it's yeah yeah you gotta wade through it now volunteers and personnel searched for four days oh. until it was decided to call off the searches oh my god um 
The full tally is, was not known until three to four months after the disaster, wow. uh, when molasses stained bodies were found in the waters off Boston Harbor. So four months later, people were being found. Oh, I know. Wow. In total, 21 people died. This include laborers, teamsters, uh, homemakers, a blacksmith, one firefighter from Engine 31, he didn't make it, mm-hmm. drivers, messengers, and unfortunately some children were, uh, oh, no. were uh, perished. This kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Pompeii. Yeah. I, I, don't have, I don't have enough knowledge to make a full comparison, but it just reminds me of sort of like a freak yeah, in, in an instant. In an instant. And um, mm-hmm. the fact that it's something that could almost, like, seal up a yeah. person. It, it sounds like that's not quite the case, but it's just what it's reminding me of a little bit. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, the, the locals really, some locals, we'll, we'll get into it, kind of had their eye on it. Others yeah. were just living their lives and, yeah. So... Uh, Speaking of locals, they brought a class action lawsuit against the United States Industrial Alcohol Company, which owned the Purity Distilling Company. Thank God. Um, It was one of the first class class action lawsuits in Massachusetts. Ooh, let's try. (laughs) Let's. I am not chewing molasses. It was one of the first class action lawsuits in Massachusetts and was considered a milestone in corporate regulation. All right. Now, okay, get this. Get this, okay? Okay. The company tried to claim the tank was blown up by anarchists. Oh, my God. Is that sound familiar? Wow. Yeah, it was Antifa that uh, blew up your tank. And it wasn't, you know, the aging uh, fucking... It wasn't the tank itself filled with expanding fermenting molasses. Okay, sure. Oh, my God. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, so they tried to blame it on... uh, anarchists who were against uh, the wartime effort because it was used for munitions. Uh, absolute bullshit. Uh, God, just, just history just repeating constantly, blaming constantly, it. Constantly, over blaming and over again. Blaming it on Tifa. Sure. Um, now, people did report hearing the damn tank creak and groan for months. Uh, some people were even reported as to taking molasses from the seepage between the cracks and the bolts for their own use, for their own oh. personal use at home. So there you go. So need that to, was... Need to sweeten your coffee? Just get it just... from the giant molasses tank <laughs> yeah, and wait for it to drip. <laughs> uh, Arthur Gell, the company's treasurer, neglected to run safety tests. Uh, and it was discover- discovered that the steel was half as thick as it should have been. So oh, they cut wow. corners. Okay. After three years of hearings and going back and forth and testimonials and such and such, the company eventually paid out $628,000 in damages. How much do you think that is in 2020 time? Oh, God. Uh, I I have (laughs) no idea. A lot? Yes, it is. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it was about nine point, uh, a little over $9 million, 9.26. Uh, relatives of those killed received seven thousand dollars per victim, which was about a little over one hundred and three thousand dollars. Okay, I think they I still think they could have gotten more, but oh yeah, uh-huh. but I'm greedy, so but that's I, I think it's valid. Uh, so how do you clean up over two million gallons of molasses? Uh, salt water. Uh, this, oh. this sounds like fun. They aimed fire hoses from a fire boat off the harbor to wash it away. I, I want that job. That sounds like fun. <laughs> oh, my God. So they shot at it from a fire boat, um, and then they used sand to absorb all the runoff. Okay. Uh, it took weeks with several hundred people volunteering. Uh, that was to clean up the immediate harbor, but weeks longer to clean up the greater Boston area because uh, rescuers crews the heroes all tracked molasses back and forth for miles around so the entire city was actually affected by this uh quote everything that a bostonian touched was sticky (laughs) (laughs) i feel bad laughing at this because so many people died but it's just so uh, (laughs) uh this is a quote from edward park's article quote uh called without warning molasses in january surged over boston uh, to this day, local folklore and residents claim that on hot summer days, one can still smell the sweet, sweet scent of disaster 
on the tiny streets of the North End. Um, now, I also want to end, well, I want to end uh, this traumatizing story um, with a funny experience, which I think is our is basically our podcast in a in a nutshell is traumatizing and funny. <laughs> um, okay, so this was also from Edward Park's piece. Um, a child, Anthony Distasio, was walking homeward with his sisters from the Michelangelo school. Hmm. He was picked up by the wave and carried, tumbling on its crest, almost as though he were surfing. He heard his mother call, but he couldn't answer. Hmm. His throat was so clogged with the smothering goo. He passed out and then opened his eyes to find three of his four sisters just staring at him. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he just by. I don't know why that made me laugh. That is adorable because for a second I was like, okay, so he choked and died on molasses. Great. <laughs> no, Great. Thanks. thanks, Jill, for that. Uh, <laughs> no, but you just woke up. He's I woke have up. like a Homer Simpson like image in my head. <laughs> I'm just waking up, like, wasted just on molasses. Wasted on molasses. Spread eagle just to see his three sisters looking at him, <laughs> staring at him, which makes me believe that they just booked it, and they just left their little brother. Oh, no! That's what I think happened. And I, for some reason, that tickled me. They all survived, but, again, traumatized, but survived. Um, yeah, so that is the uh, molasses tsunami of 1919. Amazing. I... Yeah. I love this story. I am sad about this story. I I laughed. I I didn't cry, but I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I cried on the inside. Cried in your heart. I cried in my heart. Um, it also makes me think of something they would talk about on Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> with like with like face in the hand, like not the great molasses flood of yeah. nineteen nineteen. <laughs> and yeah. so. It, that this is me. definitely a Parks and Rec situation. For sure. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Ah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Stay interesting. Please do.